Okay, so I am still in that creative rut. Um, in case you missed it, uh, you can look at my first video in this video series, uh, in which I explain what that rut means to me. And um, I, I think I am making progress. Uh, I feel like I'm making making progress progress because I feel a little less down. <laughs> And doing this series of videos really helps uh, because I am actually creating something. That's one. And also I'm learning a lot of things. I really like hearing all the different perspectives from people and all the approaches towards how to get out of a rut or how to uh, challenge yourself creatively. So today I am talking to Suzanne and I'm pretty excited because Suzanne is uh, part of our sketchbook school team. She writes our blog and uh, does a lot of uh, our Twitter feed and Facebook and manages all that. So she's very important for us. Also, she's a yoga teacher and she's a student in sketchbook school and she is a writer. She is currently working on a new book so I'm really happy that she uh, will carve out a little bit of time for me. And I am really curious to hear from her how she manages any blocks that she probably also must encounter every now and then. So uh, I'll call her, her on Skype. She's in New Jersey, I'm in Amsterdam. So we have a six, di six hours difference, but that doesn't matter. We'll both have a cup of tea and a little chat. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Aside from being in a creative rut. Well, I, I feel like I am making sort of a, a little progress step by step because it really helps to listen to other people's tips and tricks and approaches. And it also helps to know that it's normal. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I am actually very curious how, how you handle any blocks because you have so many different uh, creative paths you walk. Um, I mean, when you're a writer, the, the writer's block is like a big thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so maybe, I don't know if you have any examples of, uh, you know, experiences, but well, let's hear it. Yeah, definitely. I think um, you've actually come up with my solution already, which is the reason that I have so many creative paths is because I've run into these creative ruts before so many times. And in it, 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 it feels like it's different ways, but it's not really. It's just that the thing that I think of as being um, my best friend and part of me, uh, which is writing. You know, I've always been a writer, uh, even though I started out as an artist, oddly enough. Um, writing is the thing that I've done mostly during my life. And so it feels like a real part of me. And, you know, to use a metaphor, it's kind of like uh, if you're a runner, and your knee suddenly gives out and you can't run anymore, you think to yourself, my God, what do I do? <laughs> You're just kind of lost. And um, I think uh, this has happened so many times. And, uh, you know, in you mentioned in a previous interview, you know, just how soul crushing this is. And it really, it's a real thing uh, among creatives and among people who don't work in creative professions, but maybe have a hobby or whatever. It's a real thing, and I think um, acknowledging it uh, is the first step, and talking about it with other people, too, because when you talk about it with other people, you know it's not just you. And when other people describe, oh my goodness, it happened to me, I was lying on my couch for literally three days weeping, my story. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, yeah, this happened to me after... Um, I had a book disappointment. I was writing a book. It wasn't going anywhere. And I thought I had one of those moments where I thought, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. It's just too disappointing. I'm going to take up another career. I'm going to do something, you know, good for people and noble and whatever. I had no idea what that might be. <laughs> but, uh, the thought of giving up on writing actually had me on the couch for three days, just kind of like, oh, and my husband, Nathan, came home one day and said, what is wrong with you? And I said, I, I really, I just miss writing. And he said, well, <laughs> easy enough to remedy. But it wasn't. It wasn't because I felt like I'd kind of lost touch with, you know, the same way that you uh, were describing that you kind of lost the joy of drawing and making art. 
was how I felt. That is really interesting because um, that is probably why it feels so horrible because it happened to me with photography. I was making my money with it and I was just doing what I was told to do, you know, making what I was told to make. I just lost my joy, the passion for the taking photos, making something great. I don't do that much commission work and it's part of it is because of that, because I'm really um, afraid that I will break it, you know? And now that it feels sort of broken or maybe bend it, <laughs> um, I have I feel that fear again. But I didn't even realize until you told me this. So that's interesting. This is really it is therapeutic. This whole thing. Oh, I'm telling you, it's the best. It's one of the ways that I get out of the creative rut. Is you know, if I if I think it's just me, I'll just sit here and wallow and eat way too much chocolate and you know. <laughs> And it usually does come after doing too much commission work because, um, you know, I, I do write my own books, but I also, you know, I write for other people to make a living. And when you combine art and commerce in that way where you're, you know, uh, some artists are able to make a living by selling the work that they create as passion work, uh, the work of their heart. Uh, writers, same thing. There are people who can write, you know, Stephen King writes whatever he wants and people love it. And so he can make a living off of his passion project. For those of us not on the Stephen King level just yet, <laughs> we have to combine art and commerce. So, you know, you're really skilled at drawing. I'm really skilled at writing. You can sell your drawing for hire. I can do the same. But what happens is, uh, it does wring a little bit of the joy out of it unless you really love what you're doing. Like, you know, I love blogging for sketchbook school. So that is not to me going to pollute my joy of writing, but there has been some other writing, some work for hire where I've just been sort of like, mm, okay, I'll do this because you know, it's lucrative. But at the end of the day, then what am I going to do more writing? It's, it's, it's for me, it's, um, it's all about energy. Um, where am I putting my energy? Uh, what is taking up most of my energy? Uh, the effort that goes into something, who gets that? Who gets the best of my energy, my projects or somebody else? And that's a tough one. Yeah. So if we, if we go back to, um, that crying on the couch period, how did you manage to go back to writing? Because you felt like you couldn't do it anymore. How did you turn back to it? I didn't. I took up something else in the interim. I, you know, I had a couple of steps to this plan. One was um, I remembered advice that I had read from writers I really admire, like Stephen King and uh, Brenda Euland, who not many people know about, but she wrote a wonderful book called If You Want to Write. And basically, it's just a little cheerleader in a book form that says, if you want to write, definitely write. Just keep writing. doesn't matter. It's a lot like sketchbook school in that um, she says, it doesn't matter if it's bad writing as long as you're writing. Um, but for me, what really resonated was she said she took a long walk every day. And there is no point to this walk other than getting out and walking. Uh, it's not about exercise. It's not about pedometers. It's not about distance. It's just about getting outside. For me, it's like a meditation um, where I just go, I pick a different route every day and I'll just go walk for a while and I see different things and I see people and I start making up stories in my head about these people and it's beautiful. I just, you know, it's kind of airing my mind out. <laughs> so that's just refreshing. It's just a change of pace. Usually when we are walking or cycling or driving somewhere, we have a destination, work, grocery store, pick up kids, whatever it is. Um, this has no destination. There is, it's like in Buddhism, they say the goal of having no goal, <laughs> this has no goal. You're just going outside and walking. <laughs> and then along this walk, depending upon the time of day, I will either take myself to breakfast or lunch at a new place. It has to be someplace new, break up the routine. And uh, I have a little meeting with the committee, this and this, <laughs> and we discuss what's going on and we acknowledge, yes, okay, there's a creative rut happening right now. Let's not panic. This has happened before. We have it in the history. 
And typically we have survived. We're here eating food. Everything is cool. I kind of have a little split personality going where I'm talking to myself. Not aloud. I don't want to frighten anybody. But it's a, it's a process of acknowledgement. Okay, I'm in a rut. It's all right. I'll be okay. And then I will pick a different creative direction. I will pick uh, something different, uh, which brings us full circle to what you were saying about my many creative paths. After my spell on the couch, (laughs) a week which will live in infamy, um, I started drawing again, which I had not done for a very long time. And I think this is right about the time I found sketchbook school, if not like maybe a couple months later, where I just thought, okay, until writing and I... uh, we're back on speaking terms, I think I need to do something else because creative people have to be creative. You know, you draw, you've been a photographer, you make videos, you're creative with cooking, your style of dressing is very creative, your creativity is in all aspects of your life. Um, And I had to find my different ways of expressing my creativity. And I thought, well, I haven't drawn in years. And since I have to uh, reevaluate my relationship with writing for a time. I can't just not be creative. That would be heartbreaking. So I got myself some art supplies. Whenever I get in a creative rut, whether it's writing or making art, I uh, go to an art supply store. These days you can get any art supply you want online, but ordering it does not have the same effect for me at all. I've really got to go to an art supply store where I am in the company, even if it's people I don't know, of other creative people, and they're buying all these different things. And I'm like, what are you buying over there? Oh, these markers look interesting. Never met these before. Hello, new friend. (laughs) So that really helps too. But I think switching my creative expression after I take the walk and have the little lunch or breakfast meeting with the committee... I, um, I have to switch for a while. For me, part of creativity is in the thrill of discovery. You know, there's never a more creative time than when you're a child. And when you're a child, you don't know from experience, you have none, how to do anything. So part of their creative joy is in discovery and learning. And that's been my case as well. It's like, I have loved learning different types of writing and I'm doing an entirely different type of writing right now with the book that I'm working on. I have loved uh, learning different types of drawing, painting, and sketching through sketchbook school and other ways. I have loved learning how to become a yoga instructor. You know, I've taken lots of trainings where something that I love doing, it's so enlightening for me to be in a yoga teacher training because I learn all these different aspects of yoga And there again is the thrill of discovery. So the point is, if I can summarize, it's emptying your head sort of by just giving yourself some space in your head by just going for a walk, go to different places every time. So so you actually don't get in a physical rut because everything is new all the time. And then also, if you want to create, create something in a way that you never did before. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Creative jumpstart, a little walk, a little acknowledgement, a meal in a different place, a little meeting. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And then picking a different creative direction for the interim. And I think that's the, that's been the key for me is knowing that this is a period of time that will eventually end because even stuff that we love eventually will come to some sort of close. Doesn't who knows when, but saying to myself, you know what, this is going to go on for a period of time, not forever. So in the meantime, why don't I learn how to fill in the blank, you know, learn how to watercolor, learn how to make sushi, learn how to do, you know, make jewelry or whatever it is going to be. But yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Thank you. These are, it's, it's uplifting. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing um, yeah, your stories and, and your knowledge. Oh, thank you for doing these because the next time I hit a creative rut, I'll be able to watch these and go, oh, okay. <laughs> you can even listen to your own wisdom then. I think I'll listen to your wisdom and the wisdom of the others as well. Yeah, and then this and this. The committee, very important. <laughs>
thank you so much. I'll, I'll make, I'll create a nice video out of this and um, I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Kosha. Bye.